Hello, folks, and welcome back to what I hope will be a lightning talk session uh, for about 30 minutes here before our keynote. Uh, we've got about 34 active viewers right now, and I know some people did get up to some coding or at least some interesting group discussion during the period off. So I'm just looking right now to see if one of our presenters that agreed to pop on is here. But in the meantime, if there's anyone else out there that would like to talk a little bit about maybe what you thought about or what kinds of technologies uh, you dabbled with over the break, uh, if you had a chance to take one and weren't called back to work. So we're just looking for volunteers right now, and I'm just gonna be kind of keeping an eye on some folks that want to chat popping on here. So if I can sit on here on an open mic and, uh, and possibly embarrass myself, I can hopefully get one or two other people to come on and join me for the pleasure. In worst case, I'll just work on my work workbench. Now, who do we have? Oh, you're degree nine, excuse me. All right, we're just getting Matt online here. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Not too I bad. I forgot that you had a new account because of some account emergencies earlier. Yeah. So uh, a, a bunch of you got together for a, a, a kind of a group breakout session. But can can you tell us a little bit about what you talked about and what happened? Yeah, no, it was uh, it was awesome. We got to uh, go through a little bit of uh, some uh, reaction reagent uh, issues that one of our uh, one of our members was having. So uh, we think we might have found a bug in uh, I believe. Dev tools there where it's not actually spitting wow. air to the console, so uh, we'll have to take a look at that some more. Um, and then we also talked uh, quite a bit about um, Firebase and using that in uh, different ways and different types of applications. I've never used it in a React Reagent app. I've never um, used it either. Is that a popular thing in the JavaScript community? Um, it's uh, becoming a little bit more popular. Um, it was recently just acquired by Google, um, oh. so it's now it's now a Google project. Uh, so all of your data uh, for your authentication, you know, your data store, all that stuff is hosted by Google. So you do have a bit of vendor lock-in with it. Um, but aside from that, for smaller applications or for prototyping and things like that, it's absolutely fantastic to work with. And yeah. uh, there is a ClojureScript uh, library that you can use that uh, wraps the API and stuff like that, it makes it a lot more uh, Clojure-ish and a little bit more pleasant to work with. Um, and then we got into some really awesome, uh, you know, discussions around um, uh, just you know some some programming experiences with Datomic and you know a bunch mm -hmm. of other things. Um, so quite a few of the guys uh, have used Datomic or uh, DataScript. Uh, and you know, a bunch of different scenarios and facets. So we talked a little bit about that. Um, but no, it was a fantastic talk. Yeah, that sounds like, well, I, I'm glad that uh, you, you folks had that, that conversation. Drew's asking uh, for a brief intro on Firebase. I don't want to do, uh, do a whole thing, but is it, uh, okay, I'm gonna guess, is it like a key value store, store like Redis on the internet and then you can just correct me? Um, it's sort of. In terms of the database, it's very similar to that. Um, it's essentially a no backend uh, API. So mm -hmm. it handles things like your user authentication for you, um, your data store, which is essentially just a giant JSON uh, file, that sort of a thing. Um, and then their new expanded a uh, API and services include things like push notifications to iOS devices, uh, okay. file storage for larger uh, like bucket files and things like that. Um, so they're they're taking it from a you know a basic user authentication and database uh, no backend service, and they've kind mm -hmm. of expanded it across to um, you know a whole bunch of different use cases for mobile app development and all that kind of stuff. Cool. That's very cool. So were there any impediments to actually building a project or was it just that having a discussion was more interesting? You know, we started looking at um, just some code examples and, and uh, you know, talking about code and, and libraries and stuff like that. And then the conversation kind of developed. So we just kept rolling with it. That's about, that's the best best way to do it then. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, and it looks like we'll, we might be getting some more regular uh, uh, online meetups like this going out of that session. So I saw that actually. That that pleased me a lot. That's uh, that's a great thing to have happen. I've had a couple yeah. meetup and mastermind groups spawn out of uh, meetups and things, and those are always good. 
yeah, I'll post up a link to the uh, the service that we were using there. Um, but it's a fantastic little app that one of the guys is working on. Oh, uh, kind of, Yeah, exactly. So to uh, uh, kind of schedule some time with other people that might be interested in, in meeting up or discussing things or, you know, just sharing or talking about experiences and stuff. So definitely yeah. recommend giving that a shout. Yeah, so I think it's that link, uh, Tomas, that uh, Matt just posted above, closure-dev.surge.sh. Yeah, that's really cool. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, I know you said you were heading out, so I won't uh, keep you for, for terribly long. Uh, any any other questions or things you want to you wanna say before we kind of head into the keynote? No, uh, Closure Remote is absolutely fantastic this year, so I definitely thank you so much for putting it on. Um, and I'm super excited to see what all comes out of the, uh, you know, the community from today's meetups. So there's a lot of really interesting discussions that happened, so I'm really excited to see what uh, the community is able to take from this and, and build with it. Cool. Well, I think we'll definitely keep the, uh, the Slack online for a little while to let people kind of hook up on all that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming out, and you have a good uh, rest of your evening, and enjoy your, after, or your weekend. Yeah, you Cheers. too. I'll see everyone later. All right. Okay, so we're still hanging around here for a little while. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to uh, pop online and, and say hi or maybe talk about um, what they've been thinking about throughout the conference? I'm going to be doing some woodworking now. Well, we'll give another shout out here on uh, on hallway. Yeah. That's what else. <laughs> Stu, get Stu to come on. Yeah, we've got an emergency. Get people into the conference really quick, Link. We could, uh, if someone's got Stu on the line somewhere, they could. I could get him on. Tell, tell him he can have a beer too if he wants. So, so I guess, uh, Drew, what's the interest that you posted this this talk that kind of looks interesting? Talks about a number of different uh, scale text that Google uses. Let us see how the channels are doing. Um, oh, Drew, I was just I was curious uh, how you found that that talk. Um, kind of what your interests were. Well, why don't I just invite you up and you can tell me about why you think it's interesting? If you're comfortable, Drew. Um, no worries if you're not. Oh, it's just me standing here. All right, we're going to do it then. You are going to have to watch me. Oh, you don't get to watch me at work. Hey, Drew. Hey, can you guys hear me? We should, yeah. So how did you find this, uh, th this talk that you linked here? What's it about? Oh, sure. So um, the, the core concept here is that you're trying to, you know, do... Uh, computation over a large amount of data um, and so you've got really like two options to do that you can scale up or you can scale out scaling up is like adding more processors more ram power um, you know faster cpus to a to a given computer and scaling out is horizontally distributing your computation across multiple machines um, and then as we're very familiar with in the closure community the hard part becomes managing that state um, yeah so obviously sort of the the big players in this space like Google and Amazon and Twitter and everybody else for the for the last 20 years have been have been actively, you know, upgrading models that handle these types of problems. And what I find really interesting and that this highlight is kind of talking is that a lot of these um, a lot of these models and solutions are are very much heading towards like a, a very similar API. There's kind of like one mental model that we can sort of extract um, so I was just looking at the comments for a second. There's kind of one mental model that we can extract from that 
and Google is proposing that it's going to be very similar to their Beam API. And given a look at the other players in this field right now, mainly like Apache Spark and Flink and Kafka Streams, that are all um, trying to provide like horizontally um, mm -hmm. parallelized computing, they are kind of all heading in this, this same mental model, or at least they're looking to hope to support this Beam API is one way of, of saying it. So hopefully, from the developer's perspective, one thing that we can, um, and I'll, I'll comment on the slides in a second, one thing that we can, um, I, I guess somebody's flipping through the slides, one thing that we can hope for in the future is that we'll have a, a way to switch between these various big data processing frameworks um, and pick up um, various characteristics of them while, while maintaining the same code base, um, which is gonna be very useful. So as, as someone's flipping through the, through the slides here, what we're seeing is, um, um, if you look, I guess if you want me to control the slides, I can do a slightly better, I mean, I can sort of control the, the flow of where yeah, things are going. Yeah, you wanna share your screen? It might take you a quick second, but we've got a few minutes here, so. Yeah, I mean, if, if, no, if, uh, if people are interested, um, I can attempt to do, essentially, I think a three hour talk in, in 15 minutes that I didn't put together. Uh, you you can try, but I'll have to cut you off a little early and get ready. For yeah, you know, I it really I truly can fly through this. Um, Let's and just try. Get it before. How how would I, um? There should be a little I, button in gray underneath our faces for you that says screen share. You may need to install an extension, and we'll make you reconnect here. But you should be back on in just a moment. This is always fun when I do practices with speakers because. They start to question if they're going to disconnect or not, and I always know that they are. Um, and so they come it, back on all up I'm clicking, apologetic. I'm clicking the install screen share extension, and it's not, um, it's not doing anything for me. But if you want to bring the slide back up, and I, I'll just say next, uh, we can we can go with that. If somebody can right. find the original talk for that, the slides too, that would also be okay. Okay, here's this window here. Right, so you want me to zap pick up somewhere along. No, no, this is fine. I mean, uh, we can start right from that slide. So essentially, what you're seeing here is like sort of when these different uh, frameworks and tools came into play. And so the the first one was MapReduce, which Google just sort of outlined in their um, big tables paper. And then I believe Yahoo implemented, and this was a way to like horizontally distribute your computation. And then obviously that became like an Apache project at one point. Um, and then you can see sort of like where we are in the future down at 2016 with the Cloud Dataflow API, which some of you might be familiar with. And that sort of builds off of um, the other frameworks that you're seeing there. So if you go to the next slide, um, and just, just go through these next, next. I mean, this is just talking about like, um, these, so the, the big problems in like, you know, data processing, I'll wait for the slides here for a second. <laughs> Apologies, everybody. Um, Sorry, which slide right, do you want so, to get to? No, th this one is fine. Um, so, right, conceptually, I'm trouble. Sorry, <laughs> it's all right. But this is lightning talks. This is what they're about, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you're if you're if you're familiar with the MapReduce paradigm. I mean, what you have here is you're taking some initial set of data at the very top in the prepare stage, and you're sort of like grouping those in various categories. And then the most interesting phase of MapReduce is actually the shuffle phase, which isn't part of the name, but that's where you like group things together. Um, so that essentially you can, you're grouping them together, assuming that you wanna do some computation over that collection, right? And so this picture is very nice. The, um, the hidden problem here is that you have to, some, have to have some sort of like brain that's coordinated all that state. You know, what if one of these processes falls down? How does something know to pick up and, you know, redo that work or reshuffle that work? And how do you do that across multiple computers? That's the hard problem that things like uh, MapReduce and uh, Google's big table uh, attempt to solve for you. Um, and so it's also interesting that you'll notice here is that this is only one transition, right? This is only one grouping into one set of collections that we've got in the end. What if you want to do, you know, an, another set of uh, groupings and collections um, at a different way after you've gotten this data, or what if you want to do this in real time? And at the at the time when the big table paper, the Google MapReduce paper was released, um, those were sort of unsolved problems. And if we sort of like skip ahead to the, I'm not saying skip ahead in the slides, but if we skip to the end of the story, what we end up with is sort of like a more real time, high throughput 
um, processing system um, that's able to do this sort of like mapping and reducing, but do it like in a very clean and iterative way. And it gives the developers like a high level API to do that. So if we go to the next slide. Um, right, so this is the MapReduce paper. If you're interested in more, you can sort of pull that up, but I won't talk about it here. Um, so next. Um, system architecture for MapReduce, probably want to go to the next slide. And so just get, skip ahead through this, these guys. Um, so these are all like the, the developments that happen in the MapReduce paper to make it like better and sort of like improve performance and uh, throughput. You see like the terabyte and how much data they can handle going up. And eventually they're concluding at the end in 2015 that you really shouldn't be using MapReduce anymore. Um, so keep going forward. Um, right, so here's, uh, you're taking some, you know, set of random data and you're collecting it in aggregations that you can perform computations over. Um, so go to the next slide. Uh, you do that in parallel. So that's your horizontal distribution. Oh, and you, you want to do that across like maybe some aspect like time. That's why the Thursday, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday uh, buckets exist. So next slide. Um, and so one thing that you might, one thing that might be a problem for you, especially if you're just trying to use like raw MapReduce is eventually probably going to have a set of computations where you want to bucket things by time. So like, you know, from 11 to 12, from 12 to one. Um, and one way that you can do this with vanilla MapReduce is obviously you can do essentially micro batching. You know, you just keep replaying the batch job over and over and over again for a different set of time. Um, unfortunately, the semantics for that are a little bit clunky. Um, so if you go to the next slide. And unfortunately, if you're just doing like from one to two and two to three, um, you have this unfortunate circumstance where some of the ways that you want maybe want to collect your data aren't really based on time. They're more based on like some idea of like a session, meaning like when John, when Jose logged in and their activity on maybe like a game or a website, you want to track Jose's session on your site. You don't care that, you know, it's Tuesday or Wednesday or they, they logged in in the middle of the night. So you might want to group those together and say, like, how many clicks does Jose do on average per session? And really, so do these micro batching frameworks or frameworks that offer the micro batching don't offer any easy solutions to solving those problems. So next slide. Um, so th these are some of the problem. These are some of like the pros and cons of the these uh, um, the MapReduce and um, you know, scalability, fault tolerance, bonded data. I suppose that, that at this point, you know, this talk seems like it could be, we could go in quite a bit of depth and I know I'll probably run out of time. Um, so probably like what I would suggest that if anyone's interested in this sort of stuff, we could like make a breakout channel at some point and talk more about it. And, or I would suggest like um, Michael Dragalis's work on Onyx as an intro, since I think that framework really sort of encapsulizes where things are heading. Um, you want to bring back up like the the screen share? Yeah. I don't I don't know if we want to continue. I don't know how much time we have. I assumed I only had like well, a couple I'm minutes. I'm going to cut off in about four minutes here to go prep for the keynote. But uh, that was really fun. I I've not actually. I kind of thought MapReduce was still the thing. So thanks for for telling me that I should be looking elsewhere, if all of yeah. a sudden that's something I need. No, it, it's um. Under the hood, it's still the thing. I mean, under the hood, there's yeah. going to be a lot of the same concepts reused. And when, as a developer, you're expressing your computation, you're go still going to be expressing it in maps and reduces. Um, but you're also going to be able to mix in elements of like time, meaning like give me the average of every hour uh, for this yeah. customer or for this thing I'm interested in. And that you're going totally to be able to express like that. Months. Yeah, you're going to be able to express that. Um, at that level that I'm, you know, that I'm portraying here without having to write a lot of boiler code around it. And so that's a really powerful tool. Um, Do those exist now, those kinds of tools? Yeah, if you if you take a look at, um, and I'll link it in the in the notes here, I think probably the best introduction is uh, Beyond Batch and Streaming um, mm -hmm. by Peter uh, Keto um, and or some of the, if you, if you, if you want to close your flavor to this, to this concept, then I would take a look at um, Onyx, which there was a talk about. So 
Um, he does a fantastic job of, of breaking apart what's important here. Uh, beyond batch and streaming, I believe, or it might just be beyond batch. <laughs> I'll, I'll link it in the notes, but um, it's some really fascinating stuff. And, um, and it's something that I'm really excited about. So I was happy to see there was a talk on Onyx here. Some other people might be able to do this a little bit more justice least, than I would I'm be able to. Two from one. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us for a few. This was actually uh, su surprisingly interesting and out of the blue. So that is always the best kind of lightning talk. Uh, oh, sure. Here, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you go now and just close out the session here. Yeah, so that's that. I think I'm going to go and sit down with, uh, with Jay and his assistant Isaac to get ready for the keynote. Uh, we don't get a chance to talk too much at the end of the conference. Thank you all so much for coming. This has been a really wonderful experience. I have enjoyed putting this on again this year more than last and look forward to putting on more uh, events like this, more little events, uh, things that are easier to attend and maybe not such a uh, off time zone thing for certain people. Uh, and I really look forward to getting your feedback in the post survey that is going to go out sometime next week, uh, which will just ask some questions about your experience. So. Without further ado, I'll let you all take a brief break and then we will be back for the keynote in seven minutes.